In this machine learning class, we will see the K nearest neighbor algorithm from third unit supervised learning classification, right? So in this class, we will see the definition of KNN algorithm and solved problem by using the student data set, the given student data set and this is taken as a training data set. After that, we will see the problems in selecting the K value, that is the K is the number of neighbors, isn't it? So what are the problems will be there for selecting the K value? After that, the KNN is a lazy learner. Why KNN is a lazy learner? And finally, we will see the applications of KNN. K nearest neighbor algorithm, which is very simple but extremely powerful supervised learning algorithm. Okay. So uh, the first, the algorithm stores all available data and classifies a new data point based on the similarity. Okay. So initially, it will store all the data points. All the data points here two different groups are there. Suppose if the new data point comes here, that will automatically allocate it to this particular group. Okay, so based on the similarity of items in this group, then the new data point will be allocated to this group. Okay, the KNN is used in both classification as well as prediction. That is grouping of individual data points. Grouping of individual, so individual data points are there. Those individual data points will be grouped here. This means when new data appears, then it can be easily classified into well-suited category or class. Class is nothing but, so this, we are having three classes as per our example, okay. Suppose new data point appears here, then based on the similarity of this group items, this will be allocated to this particular class. Okay, for example, this is A, B, C means the new will be allocated to the class C. And now let us see the algorithm of KNN. First, input data. Here, uh, three input data required. First one is training data set. Training data set which is given in the problem itself and test data set or single data point. This is the second one that to be classified and the value of k. k is nothing but the number of nearest neighbors. Number of nearest neighbors to be considered. Okay. So, these are three input for our algorithm. And now let us go to the steps. And the first step is do all test points which are given in the training data set. Which are given in the training data set. And calculate the distance. The distance is calculated based on Euclidean distance, okay, of test data point from the uh, different training data points, okay, already we are having training data points, already we are having training data points, when new data comes here, for example, this one, okay, now we need to compute the Euclidean distance between the new data point and the existing data points, okay. That is the calculating distance and find the closest k training data points. So from here, which are the data point is very close to here. Okay, that should be identified. Okay, and if k equal to 1, k equal to 1, assign the class label of training data point to the test data point. Okay, for example, this is class A and this is class B. Now, this is very much close to this particular data point, which is already available in class A, isn't it? Now, for new data set, class A will be assigned. Else, whichever class label is mostly present in the training data point. So, uh, nearby this class, more number of data points are there. Those are also available in the class A only, isn't it? So, class A is assigned to new data point here. Okay, so this will be repeated until all the data points will be considered in the training data set. Now let us see very simple example for this KNN algorithm and this is the given training data set. Okay, 15 records are there. That is, this is a student data set which consists of 15 students studying in a particular class and they will give... Uh, they test the aptitude and communication level of the student and the marks are assigned out of 10. 
the maximum mark for communication and aptitude are 10 out of 10 how much mark they secured are listed in the training data set and also they assign the class value for each student based on the communication and aptitude mark okay the first category is good communication and good aptitude then they are called as leader okay the communication is good and aptitude is also good then they are called as leader okay and second one is good communication but aptitude is not up to the level then they are called as speaker okay see communication is very good but aptitude is not up to the level then they are called as speaker and the third category is aptitude is good but communication is not up to the level then they are called as intel okay see aptitude is good but communication mark is less when compared to others then they are called as intels so to build the classification model the test data is very important here uh, we have the student joes that will be used as a test data and all the other student data will be considered as a training data okay what is the purpose of test data the test data is used to evaluate the performance of the model now let us try to draw uh, this particular graph by using aptitude and communication features okay aptitude is in x axis and communication is in y axis now let us take the first record aptitude is 2 and communication is 5 okay aptitude is 2 and communication may be 5 this may be here so this record and second one is aptitude is 2 communication is 6 so aptitude is 2 here communication is 6 here this area okay and the third one is aptitude 7 communication 6 aptitude 7 may be here communication 6 in the same so leader okay speaker leader right so likewise we need to uh, identify the points and accordingly we assign the label for all the records isn't it okay and we omit the uh, future name because by using name we cannot uh, make any decision uh, for the class value isn't it so we can simply omit the future name okay and the star in the diagram is test data. Star is the Joe's, student Joe's. So, student Joe's value aptitude is 5 and communication is 4.5. Okay, aptitude is 5 may be here, communication 4.5 may be here. So, this is the test data that is Joe's student's data. But to find the nearest neighbor of the test data point, we can use the Euclidean distance of the different dots needed to be calculated from the asterisk. That is, from the asterisk, we need to calculate the distance between all the data points. Okay. And that should be tabulated here. So, distance is calculated from the uh, test data point. Okay. From here, all the data, that is, distance will be computed and that will be listed here. And next we need to assign the nearest neighbor value if k value k value is the nearest neighbor if it is only one then only the closest to training data element is considered closest to training data if k equal to one the closest is gauri so from uh, joe's gauri is the closest neighbor then her uh, class is intel so we can assign intel to joe's Okay, and if k equal to 3, only we need to consider 3 nearest neighbor. So, if 3 nearest neighbor, Gauri, Bobby and Sushant. So, 3 members will be nearer to Josh and their distance are 1.500, 1.118 and 1.414. So, these are the nearest neighbor we identified by using the distance computation. Here when come to k equal to 3, Bobby, Gauri and Sushant come here but the class label Bobby and Gauri are Intel but the class label for Sushant is leader. Now which one we need to identify? So in this uh, situation we can use the majority voting. Majority voting means two members are Intel 
and one is from leader. So the majority is Intel. We can assign the jaws as Intel. Okay, because two neighbors are only from Intel. So we can assign the majority class label here. And now let us see the problems of selecting the K values. Okay, three different categories there. First one is if K value is very large, that is exactly equal to the number of records in the training data. As per our example, K value equal to 15 for example. Okay, in this case, the class label of majority classes of training data set will be assigned to the test data. Okay, uh, for example, Intel sorry intel equal to 10 speaker equal to 2 and leader equal to 3 okay number of records now which is the maximum intel is maximum so the intel will be assigned to the new test data okay though he is leader but the majority class will be assigned to the new test data isn't it so intel will be assigned here this is the classification will go wrong and in the second case if k value is very small which is equal to 1 the k value is very small then what will happen sometimes the outliers may be very close to the new class label and that will be assigned to here instead of the correct prediction the outlier or noisy data uh, in the training data set will be assigned to the test data okay this will also be goes wrong so the best way to select the k value is between those two extremes that is we have to select only the average value to overcome that problem here we can have some suggestions for selecting the k value first one is k equal to the square root of number of training records Okay, suppose if we have uh, 16 records, then we can assign 4 as the k value, okay, nearest neighbor value. And the second one is test several k values, okay, test several k values and we can choose which one gives the best performance, okay, that value will be assigned as k value. And third one, choose the largest k value, but while assigning the uh, class, we have to choose the weighted voting process. Weighted voting process means the nearest neighbor will give will get more weight when compared to the distance weight. Okay, that is the distance neighbor. Okay, so if we choose large k value, then we can go for weighted voting process for assigning label to the test data. Why K in an algorithm is called as lazy learners algorithm? Okay, when come to eager learners, uh, the eager learner algorithm will follow the general steps of the machine learning algorithm. That is, first it will perform an abstraction of the information obtained from the input data. From the input data, it will generate the abstraction and then follow the generalization steps as per the machine learning algorithm. Okay. But when come to KNN algorithm, these steps are completely skipped out. Okay, there is no abstraction and there is no generalization steps. It simply stores the training data and directly applies the uh, algorithm of K nearest neighbor. Okay, to find out the class of new test data. Isn't it? So by using the Euclidean distance, it will compute the distance between test data and the existing training data okay based on that it will assign the class and there is no learning is happening here okay that is in KNN no learning is happening therefore the KNN will fall under the lazy learner category next let us see the strength and weakness of KNN algorithm the first one is strength the KNN is extremely simple algorithm and easy to understand and this is very effective in certain situations. Okay, and the KNN is very fast or uh, almost it requires no time for training phases. Okay, training is very very 
easy and very simple here. And these are the strength of KNN. Now let us come to weakness of KNN algorithm. It does not learn anything in real sense. Okay, learning is not it happening here. The classification is done completely based on training data. Okay, if there is no sufficient training data, then it fails uh, to make the effective classification. Okay, and also the large amount of computational space is required to load the training data of classification. Right? So these are the weakness of KNN algorithm. And next let us see the applications of KNN algorithm. The most important application is recommender system. Okay, that is uh, the items will be recommended to user based on their previous likes. Okay, that is the liking pattern will be identified based on past purchase or browsing history and then the similar items are identified by using KNN algorithm. Okay, accordingly those items will be recommended to the, student, uh, to the users, right? And the second one is information retrieval. When come to information retrieval, it will search the document or content which are similar to the given document or content. Okay, that is uh, concept search which is always called as. Okay, so these are the important applications of KNN algorithm. And so far we have seen the K nearest neighbor algorithm. And uh, here uh, we learn the definition of KNN algorithm and we solve one problem for assigning the class label for a student. Okay, after that we have seen the problems in selecting the K value and the solutions also. And then why the KNN is called as lazy learner algorithm. After that we have seen some of the applications of KNN also. In the next class we will see the decision tree algorithm from third unit. Thank you.